Buoyds are a fantastic way to simulate natural movement, like a school of fish or a flock of birds. But for my own purposes, I've needed a way to manage the natural movement of thousands of troops that could collide with each other and the environment efficiently. The difference, however, between birds and playable units are that the units need to integrate in with game logic and be able to move to specific locations, go into formations, and collide with the game world. I couldn't find any other video on YouTube around this topic that was an implementation of Boyd's for game ready situations. I've decided against using the entity component system for this project because it felt cumbersome and added a lot of development overhead. Instead I went with the Unity job system directly and the traditional mono behavior approach. If you're not familiar with the job system, I'll link a few videos in the description that would be a great starting point, since I'm not going to be diving too deeply into how it all works in this video. But essentially it provides a simple way to run multi-threaded code in Unity, and we'll be doing all the simulation logic on those threads. This is not going to be a traditional tutorial where I go through every piece of the code, so if you want to see the code it's all in the github link provided down below. But just a few important things to note, uh, if you're setting up this project from scratch, I'll be using the Unity Mathematics, Unity Physics and Burst Compiler packages to get all this to work, so make sure to install those. The core of the simulation lies around units being able to collide with each other and push themselves away from their neighbouring units. To achieve this in a performant way, we'll need some sort of a grid. Units can be assigned an index based on where they are in the grid, and then we can do distance checks to units only within neighbouring grid cells. This way, it won't be an n squared algorithm where you're doing a for loop for each unit against every other unit in the simulation. Let's quickly build out a very simple grid system. It will be defined by an origin point, a cell size, and the dimensions of the grid to show it in world space like this. Then we can create some helper functions that we can use to go from world space to grid coordinates and go backwards from grid coordinates into world space if we need it. Then we can use this function to take a grid coordinate like 1, 1 and turn it into a single integer like 21 that represents that tile. This process is called flattening. You may notice throughout the project that I'll use a lot of structs to store information. And the reason is that the job system has a restriction where we can't send any managed types like classes to the jobs. So all the data about the grid and the units and the tiles are all stored in structs. Now that that's done, let's create the unit prefab, which is just a simple cube in my case. And I'll create a unit mono behavior class as well and attach it to the prefab. In that script, I'll define a struct called unit void data. This is going to be the primary struct that stores all the simulation information that is going to be used to move around the voids. It has a lot of variables, but anything that is needed to keep track of a unit state is stored in that struct. The unit class will be very simple. We'll store the struct containing all the data for this unit within the class, then we'll create a unique ID for this unit and make some functions that apply the current transform data to the struct, and then another function to get the data out of the struct and reapply it to the transform. The job system will simply update the struct based on the simulation, and then after the simulation we'll call apply void data and the transform will move accordingly. The overhead in a lot of these simulations is having many different mono behaviors all running update functions. However, in this method, we'll package all the unit void datas of all the units into an array and send it off to a multi-threaded job. It will run the simulation there and then we'll gather all the results back in one go and apply them to the mono behaviors here. Now we'll need a centralized place to run all of this logic. Let's create a class called the unit manager and put it in our scene. This class will store all the units in the game and then every frame will do the following things. 
First, we'll check if the user has clicked anywhere in the scene, and if so, let's set the target of all the units to go to that point. Then we'll initialize a native array of unit boy data structs. This array stores all the current states of all the units in the scene. We have to do this every frame since we'll be sending it to a job. Native arrays are a supported data type that we can send to jobs. It's very similar to a normal array, except it has a bunch of safety stuff in the background. We'll also initialize a native parallel multi hash map. It sounds complicated, but this data type is also another supported type that we can send to jobs. It works very similarly to a normal hash map where you can use a key and get out a value. But in this case, the value will be a list. So what we can do is for a given flattened grid index, we can store a list of all the unit boy data structs that are currently at that tile. This will give us a very efficient lookup table to find all the units in a given grid cell immediately. And the reason we need this is, say for a given Boyd, we want to compare all the neighbors around it to see if any of the Boyds are intersecting, we can simply call upon this hash map to find those Boyds. Next, we'll loop through all the units in the scene, get their current state, the Boyd data struct, and populate both the native array and also add the struct to the correct index in the hash map. Now we have all the data that we need. We'll leave a little space here to run whatever logic we want to run on the boids. The final step is we reapply the structs back into the mono behavior and then dispose of the collections. Note that we'll pass the native array that we created above as an input into the jobs. The jobs will modify the data within that array and that's why we're able to read it back and we'll do this every frame over and over again. So now we have all the information we need to simulate our boids. So let's do the actual implementation. I've created an empty class here called the unit boid system, which follows ECS naming conventions and created a simple execute function, which takes in the native array and the native parallel multi hash map, plus any settings we want to use. Then we can call this function from the unit manager. The first job that we need to write is the avoidance calculation job to push boids out of each other. Let's create this job struct and add the burst compiled tags wherever needed to ensure we're using the power of the burst compiler. This job is a type of ijob parallel four. So the execute function here runs once per Boyd and runs in parallel. The current Boyd can be found by looking at the Boyd's array at the given index in the parameter. So for the current Boyd, let's get its current grid tile. Then let's loop through all the neighboring grid tiles to this Boyd. For each neighboring tile, we can get a list of all the Boyds stored in that part of the grid using the hash map that we created earlier in the unit manager. Note that we flatten the grid index before we look it up in the hash map. Then we can check for each of those neighboring Boyds if any of them come within the current Boyd's radius. If they do, we need to take action and push that Boyd out or push this Boyd out. So let's calculate by how much they intersect and find the vector that pushes the Boyd away. Note that the Boyd size has an effect here on how much it gets pushed. So bigger Boyds will be harder to push. This is simply a design choice and you can remove this if you want them to all have the same weight, or you could even add your own weight property. We do this process for each Boyd and then add up all the avoidance vectors created since we could be intersecting multiple Boyds at once. Then after all that, we'll take this final value and apply it to the avoidance heading variable in the unit Boyd data struct. Then we set this back to the native array to finalize the result of the calculations. Note here, if we simply just change the struct, 
it won't actually send the output out of the job. We need to reassign it back to the array in order for the changes to be confirmed. Now that all the avoidance values have been calculated, we can create the job that will move the units along their trajectory towards their final destination. This job will be very similar to the avoidance job. It is also going to be an idjob parallel 4 that runs the execute function per Boyd in the Boyd's array. And don't forget to add the burst compile tags. For now, all we need to do is get a heading direction by adding the offset to the target and the avoidance heading. Then we rotate the Boyd in that direction using its rotational speed. Don't worry about the speed factor stuff for now. This is to handle the Boyd slowing down as it reaches its target, which we'll tackle in the next video. Then we get the forward vector created by this new rotation and move the unit along that direction. We do this so that it creates a smooth arcing motion as it turns and then moves in that direction rather than directly linearly moving towards its target. We also apply the avoidance heading in the movement too so that they slide off of each other easier. An important step in the movement is to clamp the magnitude of the movement to the movement speed times the delta time so that the Boyds never move more than they should in a given frame, or snap or violently move as they tend to do sometimes. Finally, we assign the next position value, which is used in the unit.cs file to set the final transform position of the unit. We can also do some special logic in the case that the unit doesn't have an active target. Here it will just stand still, but it will still react to any collisions by just moving in the avoidance heading direction. Now the final step is to go back to the unit Boyd system and set up the jobs like so by passing in all the parameters. Then we can schedule the avoidance job first and then the move along heading job. To schedule the job, we pass in the count of the number of Boyds and run them in parallel in batches of 32. If you want a more detailed deep dive into the job system, just let me know in the comments and I'll plan a video for the future. Since the avoidance job is still fairly expensive, I'm only running it once every two frames since it doesn't have to be so accurate, but the move along heading job I run every single frame. You can see in the first version that the job B depends on job A, so calling B.complete will run both jobs scheduled in an efficient way. And to be honest, that's actually pretty much it. If we run the simulation now, we can see that the units avoid each other and they can navigate and move around each other. However, there are still some improvements we can make. For example, the first thing is to ensure the units arrive at their destination in a more smooth way. You can see here, they're all fighting to get to the same point, so we want them rather to relax rather than fight for the middle spot. So when the first guy reaches the target, we need to send back information to the rest of the herd saying we've reached the target. And we still haven't covered the units colliding with the environment and also doing stuff like formations. However, I think all these topics are a video in their own right, since there's a fair bit to cover. But if you want the completed code now, it's all on the GitHub link provided in the description. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and stay tuned to see the next part and any other cool projects I'm working on. I've also been developing my own programming battle game, which I'm going to make a video on very soon. Also be sure to follow my blog at codewithaj.com for cool tutorials and more detailed progress on my game. And that's pretty much it guys, I'll see you next time.